I'm going to share the two kinds of projectors that I have personally used and talk about some of the things I like and dislike about both. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. I think the easiest way to show you guys this is just to go ahead and show you both of these projections in action. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the least expensive. This one is very common. You see it in most art supply stores. This is the Artograph Tracer Projector. I want to say it runs around $80. That's about what I paid for it years ago, and I think the last time I checked it still cost about the same. So it's semi-inexpensive. So the way that this one works, it uses a light bulb and a system of mirrors inside to project the image onto the canvas. You're going to adjust this nozzle thing here to control how sharp your image is or get it into focus. In order for this projector to work, your room has to be completely, completely dark or you won't really be able to see anything. And even then, the results that you get, it's fairly dim. It's not the best projector. So let's go ahead and take a look at it in action. So as with any projector, you're going to want to make sure that your canvas is at a 90 degree angle and your projector is leveled right at the center. If your canvas is slightly skewed, it will skew your end result. So you do want to make sure that everything is very even. And with these projectors, especially with this one, you will have some distortion of the image itself just because of the nature of how this works and the way that it blows it up. So that is something to know when using projectors. It's minor. It's not a huge deal, but it is something to be aware of. Now, the way that this projector works is that you print an image and you set the projector on the image. You have to make sure that the image is printed fairly small. Here's another problem with this one. You're printing a small image and blowing it up much larger, which means you are not going to see a lot of detail. It gives you your general outline, which really is all most of us are going to want when using a projector just to save time for the initial outline. One of the problems is it makes the image super, super hot, which is always a bit of a concern to me. I have placed this directly on images and it caused the edges of the image to kind of peel because it got so hot. The other thing is that this one is a little bit hard to get in the right position, the right level. So I have to play around with putting boxes or books underneath it to get it at exactly the right height. You can't really put this on a tripod like you can the, the projector I'm gonna show you in a minute. So that is, so that really does tend to be a pain. But we're just going to set that on the image. We've got to turn the lights off in order for this to work. Now with all of the lights off, that gives you an idea of how much detail you're able to see with this image. It's not super sharp, not super bright, but you can see the general outline. So now let's go ahead and take a look at my other projector. The next projector we're going to look at is the Artograph Inspire 800 Digital Projector. This one seems to range in price. I, when watching it on Amazon, it ranged from around 650 up to 700. So this one is a much bigger investment, but it has a lot of bonuses over some of the less expensive projectors. So it has its own little case. It's pretty small. It does not take up much space, which for me, that is a big deal. This one has the little hole on the bottom so that you can use this on a tripod, which made my life, that alone, made everything so much easier in being able to use a projector. You can set it on a table, just like I did with the other one, but the tripod definitely is the way to go. So this one sits on a tripod. It makes it so much easier to adjust everything. Raise it higher, lower, move it around. It just, that alone made such a huge difference. This one comes with a USB drive, so I can just put my image right onto that. This also will work wirelessly. I have not messed around with those settings. I just put my image on this little USB drive. That seems to be the fastest way for me to go. So when we turn this one on, you can see it is super bright. I've still got lights on in this room and that is not a problem. That is really bright. You can actually watch movies and stuff, I believe, on this. So I'm going to pull that into focus so I can actually read what it says. And there's just a knob on top of the device to do that. And I'm going to use the remote control to find my images. You just scroll through until you find the image you want. Look at the detail. And actually, this looks way better in person. I'm not even able to capture all of the detail on the video camera. The detail there is incredible. You can see every single thing. So even if you didn't want to trace, if you wanted to draw it yourself and you want to draw all the little details small, you can blow them up and see everything. I've got lights on in this room and you can still see them. I can put more lights on and you will still be able to see this guy perfectly clear. So this is one you can use in the daylight with bright sunlight coming in the room and you are going to be able to see everything you could possibly need. The quality, the image quality is incredible. There's just such a huge difference between these two devices. One of the problems that the other projector has 
It's taking a small image and trying to blow it up large. You're going to lose so much detail. Everything's kind of blurry, you can't really see it, and again, you have to be in a really dark room. This projector gets so bright and works in just about any lighting situation. It's convenient. If you're teaching classes, you can take this with you and use it. You can use it for slideshow presentations. I believe you can watch movies on this one. You can do a lot with this. Very, very versatile product. This projector is intended for art use, so it has a lot of art programs on it that will create grids and whatever you need there. I've not used them, I really don't have use for that. Uh, that's kind of one of those optional things, but it does have some art features, or it is specifically for art. This model is the exact same thing as the LG, I can't remember the name, I'll have the name pop up on the screen exact same unit hardware wise it's got different software because this one is meant for art but you can use the other one which is a lot less expensive i have a friend who uses it for art she just has to do a few things a little bit differently to make it work well for art one of the problems that the lg version has is that it turns itself off or goes into power saving mode after a while when you have an image that's static like this with me i could have this up for hours if i wanted to not that I've needed to have it up for more than five minutes, but it could be done. With the LG one, it wants to go into power saving mode. My friend just puts two images, the exact same images, and it causes it to cycle through them so that it doesn't power itself off, but it works. So there are workarounds if you wanted to save some money because that one is a little bit less expensive. That one is intended for watching movies and TV and such, but the quality is going to be the same. It's one of those things that I had to save up for for a while, but it was so, so worth it. The difference is amazing. It really makes my life a lot easier. Now, as amazing as this unit is, it does have one major flaw, and that is in the remote control. My first remote control, and I've read where a lot of people had this problem, the battery pulls out like this. So it's got the little circle battery. That seems straightforward enough. I use these often enough. I know how to put them right side up and such. They did not want to go in. I could not get this to close once I had the battery in it. So you have to push really hard. And what was happening is once you push hard, there's a little metal piece in there, the connector, that when you push the battery in, it causes it to do kind of an accordion thing where it, it pushes the connector all the way back so it can't connect. It's a pretty big issue, and I wouldn't have known what was happening. I just thought I had a defective remote. I contacted Artograph themselves and talked to a guy who was super helpful. He talked me through or walked me through how to pull the two pieces apart on the remote and kind of fix that problem. It didn't fix for me. Mine was too messed up. But it's a problem that I guess they've known about. They were told by the manufacturer that they fixed it. The manufacturer also tried to claim that it was an error in the people who were putting the battery in. They were putting it in wrong. That's not the problem at all. It's a bad design in the way that that connects. So they sent me a replacement remote control right away. No problem. I was actually really happy with Artograph. I think they handled it so well. They were so helpful. They never doubted me or acted like I did something wrong, which was nice. But the new remote, same problem. I could, the battery didn't want to go in and I knew if I pushed it, I was going to end up with that accordion problem again. So this time I had to use a palette knife to hold that metal piece down, which I wouldn't have known where it was had I not pulled it apart on the first broken one. So getting the battery into the remote control is a bit of an issue. And if you end up with this device and have a problem, just contact Artograph. They seem very, very responsible and they contacted me back right away. It took no time to get the new remote. And you can use the device without a remote. It's just a bit of a pain. That and then the price again being as high as it is are the, the only two real drawbacks. I do think it's worth the cost if you're willing to save up for it. So it is one that I do recommend. I really like this projector. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys in a few days.